Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, we are going to take a look at cell division and reproduction. This is a very important process for biological uh, organisms, as we know that the cell is the most basic unit of life. So we're going to take a look today at this um, process of cell division and how uh, the eukaryotic cell cycle takes place and um, sexual reproduction and some characteristics that are important for you to uh, be familiar with. Um, and so right, right away, we understand that cell division plays um, many important roles in the lives of living things, right? So cell division is at the heart of reproduction of cells and organisms because cells originate only from pre-existing cells. We know that that is one of the uh, tenets of the cell theory, right? And so an organism must continue to replenish um, their uh, supply of cells. So some organisms can reproduce uh, through asexual reproduction while other organisms uh, reproduce through sexual reproduction, okay? And so throughout this lesson, we will look at some of the similarities and differences between these two types of reproduction. Right away, we can think about asexual uh, reproduction um, as a method for copying, almost like cloning, because the offsprings that are produced are an exact uh, genetic replica of the uh, parent organism, right? Whereas uh, sexual reproduction requires two parents and it is going to gen uh, generate uh, genetic diversity um, in its offsprings. So let us take a look at the... Um, happenings of these two modes of cell division, right? So we're clear that cell division plays a role in sustaining the lives of organisms. So what function then does cell division play in an amoeba, right? This is a single-celled protist, right? What function does cell division play in your body? Respond to this in your notes. So here are just some uh, micrographs of organisms undergoing various mechanisms of cell division, right? And as we mentioned before, cell division is definitely um, uh, a normal aspect in life, but it also can lead to um, abnormalities and uh, disorders like cancer, right? So let's look at the uh, prokaryotes and their method of reproduction, right? Um, prokaryotes reproduce via uh, binary fission, all right? This is a mechanism of asexual reproduction, okay? Prokaryotic cells reproduce asexually by binary fission, a term that basically means that it's uh, dividing in half, okay? And so for most pro prokaryotes like bacteria, they are gonna contain only that one um, circular chromosome, right? And this chromosome will essentially be uh, duplicated right, as this organism prepares to uh, divide and create a new um, daughter cell, okay? And so the cell is going to replicate that single chromosome, and we're going to see how this, uh, these new uh, chromosome copies will eventually start to migrate towards opposite ends of this cell. The plasma membrane will start to kind of pinch inward, and essentially that cytoplasm will divide uh, that parent cell into two new daughter cells, okay? And so we have another uh, checkpoint question here. Uh, we say that prokaryotes reproduce by bi binary fission. So why is binary fission classified as sexual reproduction? Can you respond to that in your notes? So let's look at this diagram of what's happening during um, binary fission, right? So we have this prokaryotic cell. You can think about like a bacterium, right? It has a single chromosome that essentially has to be duplicated, 
Okay. And once those uh, chrom that chromosome is duplicated, there's going to be a separation of the two uh, new chromosomes that exist. Um, there's going to be this uh, elongation that you'll observe in this um, cell. And you're going to see the movement of these chromosomes towards opposite ends. And we'll eventually have a division of this cytoplasm into two daughter cells. This is what happens during binary fission. Okay, this is a micrograph of two um, prokaryotic cells that are being created through this process of binary fission. All right, so let's look at eukaryotes. All right, the eukaryotic cell cycle and mitosis. What happens here, right? So the large complex chromosomes of eukaryotes duplicate with each cell division. All right, so right away, we're able to think about the differences between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, right? Prokaryotes have a single chromosome. Eukaryotes, however, we're clear, are larger, more complex uh, cell types, right? So they're gonna have different uh, numbers of chromosomes depending on the organism, okay? So we're saying that a eukaryotic cell has many more genes than a prokaryotic cell. And they are grouped into multiple chromosomes in the uh, nucleus of this eukaryotic cell. Right. So each chromosome contains one long DNA molecule. All right. And so individual chromosomes are visible under a light microscope only when the cell is in the process of dividing. All right. Otherwise, these chromosomes are thin, loosely packed chromatin fibers that are too small to be seen. So we'll see here um, throughout this process of mitosis when these chromosomes will become visible. All right. So before a cell starts dividing, the chromosomes duplicate, right, producing sister chromatids, and we'll be able to identify what these sister chromatids look like, right? We're bearing in mind that these sister chromatids contain identical DNA, right? They're joined together along their lengths by proteins most closely at the region in the center that we call a centromere, okay? So you've probably seen an illustration of what a paired chromosome looks like. And so we have these two uh, sister chromatids that are being held together um, at this centromere, all right? We have an illustration of that in the next slide or so, all right? So what's happening during cell division is that uh, the separation of these sister chromatids occur and, uh, as, and results in two new daughter cells uh, being created, each containing a complete and identical set of chromosomes, all right? So checkpoint question. When does a chromosome consist of two identical chromatids? All right. So here is an illustration of the creation of a complete uh, sister chrom uh, chromosome. All right. We see these two sister chromatids here in this micrograph, also illustrated here. So we have this single chromosome, but when we have these two sister chromatids coming together, they're going to be held together at that centromere and uh, separation of these two sister chromatids into chromosomes and distribution into two daughter cells occurs during uh, cell division, okay? And this is just another illustration uh, for uh, uh, chromosomal DNA, okay? So again, this is just a micrograph of probably what you've seen before as a um, chromosome where we've got these two sister chromatids here attached at this centromere. So the eukaryotic cell cycle, there are two distinct phases that we should be familiar with with the uh, eukaryotic cell cycle. So collectively, we've got the uh, interphase, okay? We've got interphase right? Interphase is going to consist of G1, S, and G2, okay? These three phases of the eukaryotic cell cycle are collectively referred to as interphase, all right? Right away, you can think about interphase as a period of uh, preparation, okay? There are some things going on here, but there's also some things that's not going on during interphase. Interphase is this period of preparation where the uh, cell is uh, synthesizing molecules, enzymes, um, duplicating its DNA, all right? Checkpoints are there to make sure that things have happened the way that they should. And then this uh, cell will move into 
um, M phase, okay, this mitotic phase, all right? This is where the actual cell division takes place during cytokinesis, all right? So we'll run through uh, what's happening at each of these uh, phases of the cell cycle, all right? So we've got interphase, all right, that we said collectively um, consists of the uh, G1, S, and G2 phase of the cell cycle. And then we've got M phase, which is basically going to contain mitosis and cytokinesis, the actual splitting of this cell into two daughter cells, okay? Let's take a look at what's happening here. So the cell cycle includes both growth and division phases, and that's what I just highlighted here. We'll think about interphase collectively as that period of growth and preparation. And then that M phase is the actual phase where cell division takes place during cytokinesis. So we refer to the cell cycle as an ordered sequence of events that extends from the time a cell is first formed from a dividing parent cell until, it, until its own division takes place, right? And so we have a checkpoint question here. A researcher treats cells with a chemical that prevents DNA synthesis from starting. This treatment would trap the cells in which part of the cell cycle, all right? So you're thinking now about these ordered steps of events, all right? At what point does DNA synthesis take place in the cell cycle? And if we treat these cells with a chemical that prevents the start of DNA synthesis, what phase are these cells in at this moment? Okay, so cell division is a continuum of dynamic changes, all right? Mitosis functions to distribute duplicated chromosomes into two daughter nuclei, all right? These cells that are created uh, during mitosis are going to be exact copies of the parent cell, okay? And so after the chromosomes are coiled up, a mitotic spindle made of microtubules move the chromosomes to the middle of the cell, okay? The sister chromatids are then gonna move, separate and move towards opposite poles at which two new nuclei can form. And so we'll see these steps as we move through mitosis. These changes that we're referring to, these dynamic changes that we see happening within the cell are characterized by the phases of mitosis, all right? So we've got prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase that will characterize these changes that we are highlighting here, okay? And so this uh, continuum of dynamic changes you should familiarize yourself with, all right? So we have a checkpoint question here. You view an animal cell through a microscope and observe dense, duplicated chromosomes scattered throughout the cell. What state of mitosis are you uh, witnessing? Okay, so we're gonna highlight these stages of mitosis. So remember we said that the eukaryotic cell cycle can be broken down into two um, general phases. All right, interphase, all right, and mitosis, all right? We said that interphase was this nice uh, period of growth right, where the cell is, you know, obtaining nutrients, synthesizing enzymes, duplicating its DNA, undergoing various checkpoints to make sure that things have happened the way that they should, right, and then it moves over into M phase where mitosis takes place, all right, so the first stage of mitosis is going to be prophase, all right, we're going to see these chromosomes starting to condense, we're going to see these um, my, um, uh, mitotic sp uh, spindles getting ready to be formed. And the next phase will be metaphase, okay? Metaphase, we're gonna see these chromosomes start to line up towards the uh, mid plate or center of the cell or the middle of the cell, okay? Anaphase, you're gonna see these chromosomes start to separate and move towards opposite ends of the cell, all right? And then telophase occurs where we now have two distinct set of, of uh, chromosomes at opposite ends of the pole. You're gonna start to see the formation of these nuclear envelopes around these sets of chromosomes. And you're also gonna start to see this structure that we call a cleavage furrow, right? 
at this cleavage furrow, you basically start to see like this indention of the cytoplasm, which is an indication that this cell is almost ready for uh, cytokinesis to take place, all right? After uh, telophase finishes, cytokinesis occurs and this um, cell will be split, the cytoplasm will be, will be split and two new daughter cells would have been generated, okay? So here again, we've got this metaphase where we have our chromosomes aligning towards the mid plate. We've got the separated chromosomes happening here during anaphase and moving towards opposite poles. Telophase, we see the creation of this cleavage furrow here, and we see these two sets of um, chromosomes at opposite ends of the pole. We see these nuclear envelopes forming around them and preparation for cytokinesis to take place. So this process of cytokinesis is actually when the cytoplasm splits and two new cells are generated. Cytokinesis, in which the, the cell divides into two, overlaps the end of mitosis, right? So those chain of events that we highlighted, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase are all going to pre precede um, cytokinesis, right? And this process of cytokinesis differs for um, plant and animal cells, all right? So in animals, cytokinesis occurs when a cell constricts, forming that indention that we saw, and a cleavage furrow forms, all right? However, in plants, this uh, structure is a cell plate. A cell plate forms, and then the cell splits into two. So to recap, we said that cytokinesis differs in um, both plant and animal cells. So let's contrast this process of cytokinesis in animals with uh, cytokinesis in plants. How do these processes differ? Respond to this question in your notebook. It's just a reca recap. This is what that cleavage furrow uh, looks like in our animal cell. Okay, this is a micrograph of what this looks like. All right, so we've got this um, constriction and indentation that you'll see in the cytoplasm here, right, after the cell has undergone the stages of mitosis, and then we'll end up with the creation of these two new daughter cells that are genetically identical, okay? Be sure to uh, catch that fact that um, daughter cells that are generated during mitosis are genetically identical to that of the parent cell, okay? So in the plant, we said the process is going to result in the formation of this uh, cell plate, all right? So um, we can see here, where's my cursor, right here, where the um, uh, cell wall material for the new cell that's going to be created is uh, becoming present here in this plant cell. The cell plate forms and two new daughter cells will be created as a result of cytokinesis in the plant cell. Okay, this is just another uh, micrograph of a plant cell that is preparing to divide. You see the formation of this cell plate right here. Okay. It's just a, a zoomed in image of what happens during um, cytokinesis. Let's watch this animation here. In animal cells, cytokinesis begins with the formation of a cleavage furrow. At the site of the furrow, a ring of microfilaments contracts, much like the pulling of drawstrings. The cell is pinched in two, creating two identical daughter cells. In plant cells, cytokinesis begins when vesicles containing cell wall material collect in the middle of the cell, the vesicles fuse, forming a large sac called the cell plate. The cell plate grows outward until its membrane fuses with the plasma membrane, separating the two daughter cells. The cell plate's contents join the parental cell wall. The result is two daughter cells, each bounded by its own continuous plasma membrane and cell wall. Okay, nice animation here. 
in animal cells. So, again, we I mentioned earlier that the uh, interphase, right, which contains G1, S, and G2 phases of the cell cycle, and then uh, M phase is where uh, mitosis and cytokinesis takes place. Well, we need to also make a mental note that there are checkpoints um, within this cycle that makes sure that things have happened the way that they should. And in the event that there has been an, a, a, a deviation and things haven't happened the way that they should, this cell will be marked for um, destruction, okay? Um, in the event that something uh, manages to pass by these checkpoints, right, we can end up with the situation such as a uh, cancerous growth, right? So cancer cells, we should know, are were once normal cells, right? However, um, checkpoints that were in place were um, faulty and things were able to slip by, and now we have this cell that's growing out of control. Okay, these cancer cells will eventually produce a malignant tumor. Okay, and so what's happening during cancer is that these cells divide excessively and they start to form this mass that we refer to as a tumor, right? We refer to this tumor as being uh, malignant when it starts to invade um, other tissues, all right? And then it can continue to um, translocate into other parts of the body, and we refer to that as um, metastasis. All right, so radiation and chemotherapy are both effective as cancer treatments because they interfere with this process of cell division, all right? So that's something to uh, keep in mind. So this picture here just sort of illustrates that there is a tumor present, right? This tumor is the result of aberrant cell division. Something has gone awry, and this uh, cell is just dividing out of control. Okay, it starts to invade nearby tissue, right? But they can also start to uh, travel to other parts of the, the body and that's when we have um, uh, metastasis taking place, all right? There's just something to think about here, all right? So, so that's uh, mitosis. Let us look at meiosis here. This is a necessary process for um, sexual reproduction, okay? We mentioned mitosis being a process that essentially copies the parent, all right? Meiosis, however, is a little bit different, all right? We have this process known as crossing over that's essentially going to be responsible for the genetic diversity that we end up with in these daughter cells that are generated from meiosis. So the sole purpose of the cells that are created from meiosis is a sexual reproduction. We're producing sex cells here. So gametes are formed during meiosis, all right? So we're gonna see a difference here in chromosome number, right? And the genetic material of these um, daughter cells that are created, all right? Um, the cells that are created during mitosis, those are somatic cells. So those are your body cells, right? That your body continues to um, re replenish for just basic uh, growth and development throughout your lifetime. Those are somatic cells. They're gonna have a chromosome number of 46, a diploid chromosome number, However, the cells that are made during meiosis are going to be um, gametes. They're going to be used for sexual reproduction, and they're going to have a chromosome number of 23, right? And we're going to see here how this process of crossing over is what's responsible for genetic diversity in these daughter cells, all right? So chromosomes are matched in homologous pairs, right? And so our body cells, which we call somatic cells, um, the somatic cells of each species contain a specific number of chromosomes. So for example, our somatic cell, uh, the chromosome number is 46, right? That means that our, our, our chromosome number uh, is 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes because these chromosomes are gonna exist in pairs, all right? The chromosomes of a homologous pair of autosomes carry genes for the same characteristics at the same place or the same locus, right? So the locus, this term you should know, is the actual location on the chromosome that we can find a specific gene, all right? We know that our chromosomes encode or carry the instructions for many of the genes that determine different traits and characteristics about us, right? So our... Um, 
illustration here shows you a pair of homologous chromosomes, which again are going to have the um, same information, okay? These sister chromatids that are held together by this a centromere. And a particular place in a chromosome where we can find a gene is referred to as the locus, okay? So gametes have a single set of chromosomes, and these are the types of cells that are generated during meiosis. Gametes are. All right, so cells with two sets of homologous chromosomes are said to be diploid. They have twice the uh, number of chromosomes, all right? Gametes, right, are sex cells, which are the egg and the sperm, are haploid cells, okay? They have one copy of each chromosome, one set of chromosomes, right? So sexual life cycles involve the alternation of haploid and diploid stages. So we have both um, mitosis and meiosis happening in, in these processes, right? So we have, for humans, we have a total of 46, chromo 46 chromosomes in our somatic cells, right? Our haploid number is 23. So gametes, our sperm and egg, are going to have um, half the number of our diploid cells, right? Because we know that the creation of new individual requires genetic information from both mom and dad. So we're going to get a set of chromosomes from mom. We're going to get a set of chromosomes from dad during this uh, process of um, reproduction. Okay. So haploid is in, diploid is 2N. You should be able to use this information. All right. So for diploid human, we're going to have a 2N, right, which is 46. Okay. So here, when we look at the stages of meiosis, they're going to um, look quite similar to what we saw in mitosis. However, there are two rounds of meiosis. So there's meiosis one and there's meiosis two because we're going to end up with two, I'm sorry, with four daughter cells being generated from meiosis, okay? This is another point of distinction if we were to compare these two processes, mitosis, yields two identical daughter cells, whereas meiosis yields four haploid daughter cells, okay? And these four haploid daughter cells are all gonna be um, genetically different, okay? And so we're gonna think about meiosis as a reductive cell division, okay? This diploid number is going to be reduced following two successive rounds of cell division, meiosis one and meiosis two. So meiosis reduces the chromosome number from diploid to haploid. And that is why we refer to meiosis as a reductive cell division. Meiosis, like mitosis, is preceded by chromosome duplication, right? So we're gonna double the number of chromosomes in that first round of meiosis, all right? The cell then divides twice to form four daughter cells, okay? That first round of division occurs in meiosis one, starts with the pairing of these homologous chromosomes. Then this process known as crossing over takes place where these homologous chromosomes exchange um, corresponding segments of DNA, okay? And so meiosis one separates the members of each homologous pair and produces two daughter cells, each with one set of chromosomes, right? And then we go through another round of division where meiosis two is again, essentially the same as mitosis. In each of these cells, the sister chromatids of each chromosome will separate. And it's gonna result in a total of four haploid cells, all right? So meiosis, we said, reduces the chromosome number from diploid to haploid, okay? So we have a checkpoint question here. A cell has the haploid number of chromosomes, but each chromosome has two chromatids, right? Chromosomes are arranged singly at the center of the spindle. What is the meiotic stage that we are in right now? We respond to this in your notebook. Okay, so um, we're starting out with interface, right? And then we go into our meiosis one, 
which are going to be characterized with the same stages that we saw in mitosis. We've got prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one. Um, so the same thing happening here. We see um, the um, chromosomes condensing. We see the site of uh, uh, the spindle formations occurring. The site of crossing over takes place. We got these sister chromatids that are now going to line up here in the midsection with metaphase one. We've got anaphase one where these sister chromatids are going to, um, these homologous chromosomes will separate and move towards opposite ends of this cell. And here we have a collective layout again of what's going to happen um, after telophase one completes, we have cytokinesis and we have the creation of these two daughter cells, which will then usher in the second round of meiosis, where now, in this case, we have homologous chromosomes. Here, we're gonna have our sister chromatids that will now separate. So we've got prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two, which will lead to um, cytokinesis, where we end up with four haploid daughter cells being formed. Okay, so at this juncture, you should stop and think about what are the stages of mitosis and meiosis? What is the purpose of mitosis and meiosis? So you're thinking about the purpose, the stages, and the outcome, okay? The outcomes of mitosis and meiosis are quite different, right? Mitosis generates two daughter cells that are genetically identical to the parent. Mitosis does. Meiosis is a, re a reduction cell division where those diploid cells will be reduced into haploid cells. So after two rounds of cell division, we're gonna end up with four haploid daughter cells, each with 23 chromosomes instead of 46, okay? So we talked about this process of uh, telophase leading into cytokinesis. We see the formation of this cleavage furrow in our animal cells, and that will lead to the splitting of this cytoplasm to generate these two daughter cells, okay? So visualizing the concept, this is what I was just mentioning earlier. Mitosis and meiosis have very important similarities and differences, okay? Both mitosis and meiosis begin with uh, diploid parent cells, that have chromosomes duplicated during the interphase process, right? We talked about G1, S, and G2. Those are all happening as similarities, right? But then when we get to M phase, we've got mitosis that will produce two genetically identical diploid somatic daughter cells, okay? And meiosis producing four genetically unique haploid gametes. All right, so mitosis produces somatic cells, meiosis produces gametes, all right? One's gonna produce genetically identical, the other's gonna produce genetically uh, different or unique, okay? So this schematic right here just um, illustrates the differences between our outcomes of both um, mitosis and meiosis, right? The result here is that we're gonna end up with two genetically identical diploid cells, right? And this process is used for general maintenance of the organism growth, tissue repair, asexual reproduction, and so forth. However, meiosis, completely different purpose, right? This sole purpose of meiosis is sexual reproduction. So the generation of gametes happens during meiosis one, meiosis two. So we've got two rounds of cell division that are going to lead to the creation of four genetically distinct haploid daughter cells. I encourage you to annotate or make some notes or diagrams in your folder that, that highlights um, the similarities and differences between um, mitosis and meiosis, okay? Um, so I mentioned the process of crossing over earlier. What's happening during crossing over is a very important um, process where uh, there's an exchange of information, right, between non-sister chromatids. And this is how we generate um, genetic diversity, 
Okay, so the differences between homologous chromosomes come from the fact that they can bear different versions of genes at, you know, different uh, lo uh, loci. All right, so crossing over is how we generate genetic diversity. So genetic recombination, which results from um, crossing over during prophase one of meiosis, increases variation. Okay, so I have an animation here. During prophase one of meiosis, homologous chromosomes pair up very closely, and corresponding parts of two non sister chromatids may trade places. This process of crossing over creates variation by producing chromosomes that combine the genes inherited from two parents. Here the process produced a total of four genetically different gametes. There are many ways crossing over can occur. In humans, crossover events happen an average of two or three times per chromosome pair, greatly increasing the variation among eggs and sperm. Note that crossing over produces some parental gametes with chromosomes like those of the parents, and some recombinant gametes with a mixture of genes from both sets of chromosomes. Okay. And so here what we have is a, what we call a karyotype. So for the human, we can um, lay out uh, the, the set of chromosomes that we have. This karyotype shows us all of the um, pairs of chromosomes that we contain, and the autosomes are numbered from one to chromosome number 22. So we have successfully mapped the human genome. So you've probably heard about the human genome project. So we know which genes are encoded on which chromosomes. We've gotten a better understanding of, you know, um, how, uh, uh, deviations from the norm can lead to um, uh, syndromes and disorders and so forth, a lot of uh, genetic uh, disorders. So things like Down syndrome, these are genetic disorders. So for example, Down syndrome comes to mind as a disorder where there is too much information. So in, 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 in cases of um, genetic disorders, more is not always better, all right? Um, we do have situations where we may have too many chromosomes, or we may have too few chromosomes where things have gone wrong during uh, meiosis, and, and those can manifest themselves in, in different ways. Um, but Down syndrome is a, a genetic disorder that's characterized by too many chromosomes. And so chromosome number 21, it's, um, it normally would appear as a pair, right? Like all of our chromosomes do. Um, but individuals with Down syndrome have an extra chromosome number 21. So instead of there being two chromosomes, there's an extra one. It's a third one. And so we refer to this disorder as a trisomy, all right? Trisomy 21 is what we physically diagnose as Down syndrome, okay? And so there are other uh, genetic disorders, again, where there are are too many chromosomes, there are too few chromosomes, and they're char characteristic of other disorders. All right, so chromosomes number one through 22 are known as autosomes, okay? These are going to encode for various uh, genes in our bodies um, for basic growth, maintenance, and so forth. Uh, their traits and physical features and characteristics. Um, the second set of chromosomes, um, are our sex chromosomes, okay? This is going to be the genetic determination of gender here, all right? XY chromosomes for male and XX for female. You should be familiar with these um, designations, okay? So this checkpoint question says, how would the karyotype of a female differ from the male karyotype, all right? We're gonna see that difference here in this pair of sex chromosomes. Okay, which pair would be female, which pair would be male? All right, let's stop here. You do have a set of concept review questions that you should be able to respond to by um, Friday, September 30th.